Hello everyone. Uh, so as always, for the sake of fairness, since I have students who are presenting the Adolf Sachs International Competition in Dinan, I am offering here uh, to share some interpretation tips about the Cinq Visions Amoureuses. Uh, I am doing it in English so that the automatic translator of YouTube can eventually make it accessible in your respective languages. So, first movement, uh, tormented, because love is also, not only, fortunately, but also a source of torment. Uh, the inspiration is clearly to be found in the music of Rachmaninoff. Uh, the first pianistic gesture, for example, is really typical. I refer you to the sonata number no. 2, opus 36. <laughs> The rhythmic theme to remember the fourth musical moment of the opus 16. Well, mine uh, sounds a little Rachman enough for dummies, but I wanted you to understand that it is both virtuosity and character. I insist on this point for those who would be tempted to make it only a finger exercise without trying to inhabit each note. So the first tip is to lightly underline the first notes of each group to give direction to the phrases and to give um, meaning to the musical discourse. La, o, a, i, a, do, i, a, li, a, di, a, di, a, la, a, do, a, di, a, o, di, la, di. The second advice is to give weight to quarter tones and alternate fingerings, to clearly mark the, the distortion of the timbre. They really participate in the requested torment effect. So tone them, support them, put them in tension, uh, a real sustenuto. Concerning bars number three and seven, I could have written a big slur to continue in the spirit of the flow of notes. Some students interpret these bars as more rhythmic. Why not? Um, even if in my mind it's the same fast legato gesture, so I could have written it as real notes and not with the tremolo technique. And finally, from bar 19 to the end, uh, the challenge is really to obtain a diminuendo from mezzo forte, mezzo piano, piano, to pianissimo, despite the, the low register. Uh, we will have to opt for cleverly balanced subtone because the piano part becomes sparse uh, it slips towards the, the treble register and the saxophone uh, at the end is really naked to conclude i'd like to point out that originally i had written a tempo of 92 which is super fast actually and simon dirick in his great wisdom he invited me to leave the tempo to the performer's choice. Truly, it's more a question of temperament than speed. But still, 92. Think about it. <laughs> 